Coming up on this Citrus TV News Update, we break down the latest COVID-19 numbers at SU, what it means for the rest of the semester. And coming up tonight, I'll show you how you can stay healthy on campus mentally and physically during a pandemic. And Donondaga County teachers must undergo random COVID testing after a spike in cases. All that and more, Citrus TV News Update starts right now. Coronavirus cases continue to rise at Syracuse University after at least one reported off-campus party last weekend. I'm Michael Fernari. As of today, there are 76 active cases on campus. That's up 12 cases from yesterday. Citrus TV's Ricky Sayer is here to break down how the rise in cases will impact the remaining weeks of the semester. Ricky? Yeah, there is no doubt that today's news is good news. Yes, COVID cases continue to rise, but they are doing so more slowly. Just to take us back a few days, we went from having four cases Monday to adding 16, then adding 20 for two days in a row. Today, there were 12 new campus cases. That means that for now, it appears new cases went up, plateaued, and are now decreasing. Again, those are new, not active cases. It's what health officials want to see. In terms of how this impacts classes, well, the university reported that in the past 14 days, there were 80 new cases. It's below the state's 100 case threshold, and as we reported yesterday, if SU doesn't reach the threshold by the end of today, then in the state's eyes, cases reset to zero. That's why the university isn't transitioning to online learning right now, and barring a reversal in the downward trend I mentioned earlier, it's unlikely the state forces SU to move classes online at least in the next few days. It's worth noting, the university is not out of the woods yet when it comes to this cluster. That's Vice Chancellor Haney's own assessment. They are keeping the pause on in-person activities. Haney said they may reassess that decision in the coming days. We know they are paying close attention to COVID and dorm wastewater to see if this cluster impacted students who live on campus. We know SU believes that from the current 76 cases, 68 are linked to recent off-campus parties. Haney is cautiously optimistic this cluster has been contained. Many people in the SU community are hoping his optimism is warranted. Reporting in Syracuse, Ricky Sayer, Citrus TV News. On top of following New York State guidelines to stop the spread of COVID-19, students are encouraged to take extra precautions to stay healthy, both mentally and physically. Our Citrus TV reporter Louise Rath breaks down how students are using new resources and facilities to take care of themselves. And as of this week, Syracuse University relocated their main on-campus testing location from the quad outside of Carnegie Library to right here in the newly renovated stadium. Resources are also available to students in the Barnes Center at the Arch, whether they're struggling mentally or physically. Other than the very obvious ways students are staying healthy this semester, Syracuse University's mental health services were highlighted this past week during Student Association's Mental Health Awareness Week. While the Bard Center at the Arch is not offering in-person counseling sessions, they have adapted their services to an online format. Students can sign up for virtual group therapy sessions, individual counseling, and guided meditations through SU's patient portal. And the other not-so-obvious health precautions students are taking is getting the flu shot. The semester Syracuse University mandated that students get their flu shots with the winter months quickly approaching. I think because COVID is seen as something that's really similar to the flu, any precaution that can happen is definitely good. I know for myself personally, I don't get the flu shot normally because the only time I've ever gotten the flu shot, I also got the flu that year. So I'm just someone that kind of stays away from it. But having it as a, pre a precautionary measure, I do think is beneficial. Also, don't think very much to ask either. It doesn't really, like maybe the five minutes that you spent getting the shot, and I absolutely hate shots. Um, it's really not much of an inconvenience. So. With another Syracuse winter on its way, students are bound to get sick. For some, they fear the winter months will make it harder to control the coronavirus. The cold season and other symptoms coming up, um, your immune system generally de gets um, depressed a little bit and is a little bit suppressed coming into um, cold and flu season with the winter, so it might make people more susceptible. And if you haven't gotten your flu shot yet, not to worry. The newly renovated stadium is welcoming students from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. to come in and get vaccinated. For Citrus TV News, I'm Louise Rath. And Vice President for the Student Experience, Robert Hradsky, sent an email to all students yesterday reiterating the requirement to be mindful of their safety, calling this weekend in particular a, quote, fork in the road due to the large increase in cases from the off-campus party on Walnut Street. He stresses for students to stay in central New York, not to participate in group activities, 
and to wear masks and stay six feet apart from others. Within the same email, Horadsky also offered university-sanctioned events for students to participate in over the weekend, such as Orange After Dark, Zoom lectures, and gaming events, some of which included lectures for Hispanic Heritage Month, a virtual escape room, and game night through Orange After Dark, as well as music and message hosted by Hendrix Chapel. And while many of the activities this weekend are virtual, students might want to take advantage of the renowned CNY fall weather. With masks and social distancing, of course, what's this weekend's weather looking like, Walker? All right, well, kicking off today, we're seeing temperatures stay at a nice 60 to 70 degree range. Right now, we're sitting at about 67 degrees, and it's going to stay partly cloudy. Rain won't be a big worry for the rest of your Friday. You'll see some clouds come in, but nothing too serious. However, one thing to focus on is the winds. We will be seeing a, an increase in winds from about five to 10 mile per hour to around 10 to 15, and that'll progress all the way throughout Sunday. So just keep that in mind if you're going outside. Now heading into tonight, as the sun goes down, temperatures are gonna go down a little bit as well. We'll see things go from around that nice 67 degrees that you're feeling now to a colder 61 degrees. Again, it's still summer temperatures here, although we are progressing into fall, this will be a nice little spike in temperatures. Right now, or tonight, however, winds will stay at around 10 miles per hour. So keep that in mind, winds aren't going to be settling anytime soon. And it will stay mostly clear. So from tonight, and then as you head into tomorrow morning, winds will stay pretty high, but the sky will stay fairly clear. It'll be mostly sunny tomorrow morning at a nice 63 degrees. So it will increase a little bit as you wake up in the morning. So how's the rest of your Saturday going to look? Well, as you can see, 9 a.m., you'll start off at a warmer 66 degrees. However, as you get to noon, it goes all the way back up to 70. So you'll be ranging within 60 to 70 degrees throughout this weekend. One big thing to take away for Saturday is you might need an umbrella once you get past the afternoon. From noon to 6, you will be seeing some PM thunderstorms. And to make the matters worse, you're going to be mixing around 10 to 15 miles per hour wind, so it won't be making for a great time to be outside. So definitely take advantage of your Saturday morning. Temperatures, however, aren't dipping too much. You're just going to be having to battle that rain and wind that I talked about before. Now looking at current temperatures here across the map, Elmira enjoying a nice 70 degrees, but across the board, things are staying fairly similar. Cortland and Rome down in those lower 60s, Fulton kind of enjoying that as well. Syracuse right in the middle at 64 degrees. Like I said, fairly even across the board. Now for me on outdoor conditions this weekend, I decided to put things at about a moderate. My reason for that, of course, thunderstorms on Saturday and breaking into the beginning of your Sunday won't make for the nicest time to be outside. Now there will be clear skies on Saturday and 10 to 15 mile per hour winds throughout your weekend. Now, clear Sunday. Sunday's gonna stay fairly clear, but the winds will not change. Taking a look at the five day forecast here, Saturday through Wednesday, it's gonna go up and down in rain to clear skies, but temperatures will stay fairly similar. Big takeaway for Saturday. As you can see, things are at high of 78, but as low as 44, and that's a big difference. So that means Saturday night could be a lot colder than you intended and you will be battling a little bit of some thunderstorms. So Saturday towards the back half of the day won't be the nicest. Your Sunday is looking to make a fairly nice day, but Monday and Tuesday, you will be battling some on and off scattered showers. Monday, you'll be dealing with a lot in the front half of the day. Second half of the day, it'll stay fairly clear. Tuesday, it'll be on and off pretty much throughout your entirety of the day. Wednesday is hopefully when we will get a break from this rain. Like I said, temperatures are staying fairly similar. For, Cit for Citrus TV News Weather, Walker Simmons. Well, earlier this week, Dino Babers compared the 2020 season to the movie Heartbreak Ridge with Clint Eastwood, saying you have to adjust, adapt, and improvise. Welcome into sports. I'm Will Scott. The Syracuse football team did just that in their last game against Georgia Tech. The blowout win over the Jackets gave the Orange their first win of the season. And now another good opportunity to pick up a big win tomorrow against Duke. Even though Syracuse is well-rested after a bye, Babers thinks a winless Duke team might have the upper hand out of the gate. They're going to come in here ready to go. They have a huge advantage because they played a game last week, and that normally means that they're going to have an opportunity to start a little bit faster than us. We're going to have an advantage that we're going to have some guys healthy, supposedly. And hopefully, you know, we can catch up to game speed fast enough that we don't get too far behind where we can make a game of it. With the win tomorrow, the Orange would move to 2-2 two and two on the season, with Liberty coming to town next week, and after that, a trip to Clemson. Syracuse and Duke kick things off from the Dome tomorrow at 12.30.
Well, speaking of 2-2, two and two, that's the record of the 8th-ranked Syracuse volleyball team. The Orange had a great start to the season, two impressive wins over Pitt, and then last weekend dropped both of their matches at Notre Dame. This weekend, they're in Louisville, taking on the Cardinals, who come in at 2-1. and one. First serve from Kentucky is at 6 o'clock tonight. From the Bluegrass State to the bubble, where a title can be won tonight. The Lakers taking on the Heat in Game 5 of the NBA Finals. L.A. comes in with a 3-1 series lead. And with a win, will take home their 18th NBA championship. Heat point guard Goran Dragic is doubtful. He suffered a foot injury in Game 1. LeBron will be going for his fourth ring. It's win or go home for the Heat. That's also the case for a couple of baseball teams taking the field tonight. The Yankees and Rays going at it in Game 5 of the ALDS. The Yanks won last night to force a decisive fifth game. Garrett Cole have the ball for New York. The Rays are throwing Tyler Glass now. First pitch from San Diego is at 7-10. The winner will take on the Houston Astros in the American League Championship Series. That's all for sports. I'm Will Scott. Thanks, Walker. Onondaga County will begin randomly testing faculty and staff at county schools next week. According to County Executive Ryan McMahon, they will use saliva swabs in groups of 60 to start. The goal of random testing is to detect cases in asymptomatic carriers. This comes after seven employees at Fayetteville Manlius Elementary School tested positive in one week. The man has yet to announce which schools will receive testing first. And Syracuse Mayor Ben Walsh is currently in quarantine. Walsh believes he may have been exposed to COVID-19 at an in-person press conference on Wednesday, where Binghamton's Mayor Rich David was in attendance. David tested positive for the virus later that day. Walsh is still awaiting his test results, but plans to work from home for the next two weeks regardless. Walsh is one of 10 new mayors at the press conference, urging President Trump and Congress to approve an emergency package that would help cities facing severe, severe budget crises because of the ongoing pandemic. And curtains will be closed on Broadway even longer than expected. The Broadway League announced today that shows will not resume until May 31st, 2021 at the earliest due to the pandemic. The previous reopening date was set for January 3rd. For continuing coverage, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citrus TV News and like us on Facebook. And if you want some laughs, follow our new TikTok account. I'm Michael Frenari. Have a great night, Syracuse.